This is why diamonds are used in cutting materials, for example, glass cutters. But there's another kind of carbon which is familiar to us, and carbon evidently then occurs in two kinds of crystal forms. We say it's polymorphic. The graphite structure, which is what is in pencils, is flat and sheet-like, and the layers slide easily over one another, and this is why graphite has the properties it has. They slide over one another because although the atoms within the sheets, the carbon atoms in the sheets, are bonded strongly, the layers themselves are only lightly held together by thin, what you might call, electron clouds. And this is a, a weak kind of bond that we call a semi-metallic form of bonding. We see this kind of bonding much better in copper. In copper, which also has a cubic structure, the atoms are closely packed together at the corners of cubes and also at the center of each face of the cube. And we call this face-centered cubic. And the copper atom has four electron shells. The first three are complete, but the outer shell only contains a single electron. And being farthest from the positive charge of the nucleus, this electron is not very strongly held. And it breaks away and moves at random throughout the copper. In this way, a, a sort of a cloud of negative electrons is formed. And the individual atoms, which are now positive because they've lost the negatively charged electron, are held together by what you might call the pressure of this electron cloud. This is the metallic bond, the third kind of bond. So the atoms of minerals are held together by one of three kinds of bonds, the ionic, the covalent, or the metallic. And the kind of bond and the way that the atoms are packed together controls the physical properties of the mineral. And by physical properties, we mean those properties that we can see or touch or feel or, if you feel so inclined, can taste. And salt is a good example of this. If we try to break salt, we find that salt always breaks with flat, shiny planes, which form sharp corners or a cubic structure, or cubic shape. And that breakage of salt, and we call that cleaving, the breakage along natural planes within the salt um, <coughs> crystal, is caused by the internal structure of salt. The breakage takes place here, here, and here. So salt has three cleavage planes, all at right angles, which produce sharp cornered um, fragments when you break the salt. The attraction between the sodium and the chlorine atoms, the ionic bonds of the structure, is broken at the midpoints of the bonds. And since the atoms are arranged in a cubic structure, then so the breakage planes are arranged in a cubic structure. Another mineral which has got a very well-defined cleavage is mica, muscovite mica, which breaks in sheets. And you can peel off pieces of muscovite mica without any problem at all. In other words, mica has one well-defined cleavage plane. It breaks in one direction to make flat sheets. And the reason for that lies in the atomic structure of the mica, just like it did in the salt. And here we've got two models, one here and another here, atomic models of muscovite mica. In this model, the size of the atoms is shown by the size of the balls. So this is a, an atom of oxygen. This is a much larger atom of potassium. And if we open up the model, you can see small atoms of aluminum, which are red, and here large 
uh, representatives of water. In this model, on the other hand, the atoms are not given their correct size in proportion to one another. The atoms are treated all as the same size, and the different elements are indicated by different colors. So this is oxygen, this is silicon, and this is potassium. In the other model, the silicon atoms were quite hidden in between the groups of oxygen atoms, and we couldn't see them. So this model has got some advantages. And the distance between the atoms is indicated by the length of the wire spokes between the wooden balls. So this is a short link. This is a relatively short link. But this link here is very long. And it's here that the Muscovite breaks in the area, or at the level of, the long, weak bonds between oxygen and potassium. In this model, that breakage level is here. So one sheet of mica is here on this model between two layers of weakly bonded potassium atoms and on this model that is a sheet of muscovite mica. Sheets which reflect this atomic structure can be seen in the top right hand corner of this specimen. There are of course thousands of atomic sheets in each of those cleavage sheets. But the breakage is at the same place, at the level of the potassium atoms. Because the potassium atoms are the only link between as many as six atoms in one sheet and six atoms in another sheet. And just like trying to shake hands with 12 people, this is a pretty weak link in the covalent mica structure. Now, a mineral with quite different properties to mica is quartz. In this specimen of quartz, there are no cleavage planes like there were in the mica no cleavage planes as there were in the salt. The quartz breaks rather like glass, irregularly. And we say that the quartz fractures rather than cleaves. And the reason for that is found in the atomic structure of quartz, of which this is a model. And don't be misled by the long spokes between the black silicon atoms. That's just to hold the thing together. The quartz structure is a three-dimensional arrangement of oxygen, which are the red atoms, and silicon, which are the black atoms. And there are no natural breakage planes within that atomic structure, as there were in the Muscovite. There's nowhere for the quartz to break, if you like, so that it just breaks any old way. And it has no cleavage planes. So the way that a mineral breaks, whether it cleaves or whether it fractures, is controlled by the internal structure of the mineral. If there are weakly bonded natural planes of breakage, the mineral cleaves. If there are not, then the mineral fractures. Now the internal structure of minerals also controls the way that the mineral appears when it grows as crystals. The crystal form, the external form of the mineral, another physical property, then is also controlled by the internal structure. There are 32 basically different shapes in which we find crystals. Each of these shapes formed by the unit cells of the individual minerals. For example, this is the unit cell of salt. These are the corners. And there. And that unit cell can build cubes simply by piling more cubes, more little cubes, together. But it can also form a quite different shape, indicated by this model. Each of these black squares representing the sides of a cube. And in this case, the cubes are built up into a pyramid. And you may say, well, uh, <coughs> this has got very obvious steps to it. And of course it has. But remember that the size of these steps is about a hundred millionth of a centimeter. 